What's the longest word ever spoken on the Game Theorist YouTube channel? FNAF! What? No, long... It's anti-disestablishmentarianism. Here, let me throw in some big words just in case. Entrepreneurship, anti-disestablishmentarianism. Bonus points if you know which video that's from. I made a short video asking if people were interested in me comparing the words of Game Theory's current host, Tom Robinson, to its former host, Matt Pat. And you all did not disappoint. In fact, even Tom himself commented on my Instagram reel asking for this analysis. Tom? This is for you. Today, we're gonna to be analyzing all of the words spoken on the channel, including speaking rate, word difficulty, sentiment analysis, most common words and phrases, and I even use an AI to do stylometric analysis of both Matt and Tom's words. Moreover, I think I can pretty confidently conclude whether they have two distinct writing styles or if they're both just reading words written by someone else. But hey, that's just a theory. Oh, dang. Whoa, 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 you can't just steal their catchphrase. Ugh, I wish we had our own catchphrase. We already do. But enough talk, more data. It's data time. I am data. In 2009, Matthew Patrick started his YouTube channel. He mostly used it to share his auditions and acting performances. However, in 2011, Matt Pat, along with his wife Steph Pat, started uploading their first game theory videos. Here, Matt Pat would analyze the lore of video game backstories and formulate theories about these games. As the channel grew, they hired on a team to help with their production and even expanded to several other theorist channels. Many of you are here because you saw our ad that runs specifically on his channel. Looks like you're watching a game theory video. <gasps> How do you know what they're watching? But what's really interesting about this channel is that Matt Pat and Steph Pat grew their team until they basically worked themselves out of a job. By the end, I believe Matt Pat was honestly just lending his performance in front of the camera. In 2024, Matt and Steph announced they were retiring from the channel and that Tom Robinson would be replacing Matt as host of the channel. This is one of the few times a large YouTuber walked away from a successful channel while still trying to keep the channel going in their absence. So what I want to know is whether changing speakers has a perceivable impact on the transcripts we're analyzing. I suspect Tom's speaking style is noticeably different from Matt's. But hey, that's just a theory. A data whoa, whoa, theory. Whoa, 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 I just said you can't use your catchphrase. I said data theory, not game theory. That's allowed. If you behave for the whole video, I'll let you say it one time at the end. In total, I was able to download the transcripts from nearly 800 of their videos, totaling nearly 200 hours of watch time. This is over 2 million words spoken, with a lexicon of nearly 30,000 unique words spoken. However, the distribution of these words over the years has not been consistent. In 2012, MatPat only uploaded 20 videos, compared to 2023, where the Game Theorist uploaded 95 videos. Yeah, but most of those are probably just shorts. I don't think so. The number of words spoken on the channel has also increased. In 2012, MatPat spoke a total of about 23,000 words, whereas in 2024, the channel had about 233,000 words spoken. That's a 10x increase. How can we tell if his speaking style has changed over the years? That's a bit more difficult to do, but we can analyze a few things. First off, we can see how difficult his vocabulary is. How do you measure that? I have a Python library that contains a list of 3,000 words it thinks are the easiest words in the English language. I just provide every word spoken on the channel to the library, and it tells me if it's in the list or not. From this, we can see that the percent of difficult words spoken on the channel is over 17%. That's almost exactly the same as the Educational Science Channel Veritasium, and it's higher than my channel. If we plot this percentage over time, we see that this is relatively consistent with maybe a slight decline, averaging between 16 and 22% each year. Eh, that's not much of a change. Well, let's look at their speaking rate. Oh, Matt Pat talks really fast. Well, that wasn't always the case. In 2012, Matt Pat was speaking at a rate of about 125 words per minute. That increased in 2024 to about 204 words per minute. This is really fast. The average English speaker talks at about 140 to 150 words per minute. I speak around 160 to 180 words per minute. Okay, but speaking rate and word difficulty doesn't say much. Well, I can also do sentiment analysis on their words. What's that? That's where an AI reads the transcripts and evaluates how positive and negative each video is. If we look at their positive sentiment year over year, we see that for most of the channel's existence, they are pretty consistently positive, averaging between 50 and 60%. Similarly, we see that for most years, their negativity rate is relatively low at around 30 to 40%. What's their most negative video? It's a short they made about the Switch 2. The Switch 2 is pay to win. That's right, you had to 
hey, to play a tech demo. As you might imagine, fans were livid. But it gets worse. That is not going to be a good 4K experience. And we thought microtransactions were bad. Eh, that doesn't seem all that negative. It's important to keep in mind that since shorts don't have as many words, they tend to get scored more extremely positive or negative, whereas longer videos with more words tend to average out and be more moderate. Fine. What's his most negative long-form video? It's a series he did about how Nintendo's Mario is really bad. Super Mario, more like super villain, truly evil man, is in fact a murderous, womanizing animal abuser, a cruel, misanthropic sociopath. Who knew there was so much drama behind Super Mario Brothers? And one final negative video is an ancient gem back when Matt Pat was just uploading his acting performances. You know, he's right behind you. He's staring through your window. He's creeping now. Is that a singing theory? It was a different time. What's his most positive video? It's actually another ancient video from his acting days. Thank you all for coming. It wouldn't have been the same without you. One day this boy will know what a brave and gallant woman his mother is, and how strong and noble his father. That's another short video. Fine. If we look at some of his most positive long-form videos, we find some really positive videos about the work Matt Pat and Steph Pat did with St. Jude's Children's Hospital. We want to support charities that not only are helping to treat people, but are helping to solve the core problems. They're doing the research and they're empowering other researchers and other scientists. Thank you guys so much, so much for having <laughs> makes such a difference. Today we showed that you can unite for a greater good to give children a chance at life. Treating children with cancer and helping to forward cancer research around the world. Do you, do you like this type of analytical content? You're still watching this video. If you like this video, please like this video and subscribe. And if you really want to support this channel, join my Patreon account in order to get your name in the credits. Finally, if you want to find out more about what I'm working on next, subscribe to my newsletter. Freedom! Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> What's Matt Pat's most common word? Okay, so this is something everyone asks me about, and it's actually really difficult to do. Why? I bet his most common word is Freddy. No, his most common word is the, just like it is for all English speakers. No, 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 I mean like real words. Right. So, if we compare the frequency of words spoken on Game Theory to the words spoken on other YouTube channels, we can find the words that are commonly spoken on this channel that are not commonly spoken on other channels. That way, we can determine which of his words are his most uniquely common words, or top words. If we look at these top words, we see his sixth top word is Freddy. I knew it! Followed by animatronics, then Fazbear, then MatPat, then Afton, and finally, the top word on his channel is FNAF, spoken an impressive 1,600 times on the channel. FNAF, 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 FNAF is always on our minds. He talks a lot about FNAF. Right. As you can see from this list, the game theorists talk a lot about Five Nights at Freddy's, as well as many characters in the game like Afton and Fazbear. Does this process also work on common phrases? It does. If we look at the channel's top phrases, we see 250 instances of his famous outro. But hey, that's just a theory. A game theory. Thanks for watching. But hey, that's just a theory. A game theory. Thanks for watching. But hey, it's just a theory. A game theory. Thanks for watching. But hey, that's just no. a theory. Not yet. Even more common, at over 500 instances, is Matt Pat's intro. Hello, Internet! Welcome to Game Theory! Hello, Internet! Welcome to Game Theory! Hello, Internet! Welcome to Game Theory! But what I really want to do is compare Matt's words to the words of his successor, Tom. Tom took over hosting the channel in March of 2024. So I have a lot more data of Matt speaking than I do of Tom speaking. So for this analysis, I limited Matt's transcripts to just his later videos. In total, I took the last 36 hours of content from Matt and 36 hours of content from Tom in order to do a direct comparison between their words. If we look at their speaking rate, we see a slight difference. Matt speaks at about 210 words per minute, while Tom speaks at about 195 words per minute. So Tom is a slower speaker. Well, 195 words per minute is still really fast. Remember, the average English speaker speaks at about 140 to 150 words per minute. It's just that Matt speaks even faster. However, Matt's speed varies more. On Matt's videos, the standard deviation of his speaking rate is about 28, whereas Tom's is only 17. 
What does that mean? That means that even though Max speaks faster on average, his speed varies more from one video to the next, whereas Tom's speed is more consistent throughout the videos. What about the actual words they're saying? How has that changed? If we look at the difficulty of their words, we see that for both of them, 18% of their words are considered difficult. If we do sentiment analysis on their words, we see that both speakers have a positivity rate of about 53 to 55% and a negativity rate of 37%. So they're the same. It would appear that way. That seems like a big coincidence. Well, not really. If we consider there is a whole team behind this channel, we have to assume that the writing team that wrote the scripts for Matt is the same team writing for Tom. So in reality, it's probably the same words being written, just a different speaker saying them. So did anything change when Matt Pat left? Well, I was gonna leave it at that. But then I decided to do something I don't often like to do, and that is to let the AI do an open-ended stylometric analysis of their words. What's that? That's where I give the AI several writing samples of both speakers and ask it if it thinks the speakers have changed. For this analysis, I took four scripts from the end of Matt's run and four recent scripts from Tom's videos. In total, I captured about 15 to 20,000 words from each speaker. I then asked the AI to analyze the similarities and differences in their words, paying extra attention to see if it seemed like the two speakers were really one speaker. This is what the AI had to say. Both speakers produce highly readable, audience-facing, explanatory scripts, but Matt uses more direct audience engagement tools, questions, second person, exclamation, cohesion markers, while Tom uses a more neutral and informational style. Matt encourages the viewer to think along, often prompting engagement and constructing a conversational argument. Tom focuses on a clean transfer of information with minimal rhetorical decoration. In summary, the separation is clear. Divergence across multiple linguistic dimensions strongly indicates two independent authors. Both appear to be individually authored scripts, possibly with light copy editing. Stylometric evidence supports two distinct single author voices, not one author switching styles. Wait, so the AI thinks they're different writers? It seems so. But what about everything you said about them using the same writing team? This did surprise me. So I did a bit more investigating and found an interview of Matt and Steph where I think they addressed this very issue. Every script I touch and every script right. I approve and every mm -hmm. script I have polished to my voice. So that way it's not just me as a mouthpiece. One of the reasons why it's like, hey, it doesn't make sense for me to just stand here and speak the words of other people. It's like, that that doesn't feel true. If if my team is doing most of the research and if Tom is doing all the game theory and Amy's helping supply him with the style theory stuff, like they should be the ones representing that. This is their show and they it they deserve and they've earned the right to step forward and kind of take that place for themselves. So Tom writes his own scripts. I believe so. If someone from the game theorist is watching, and Tom did say he was fascinated by this, I'd like to know if this is true. Based on everything I've seen, it seems most likely that Tom is writing his own scripts in collaboration with the researcher writing team. And he is speaking in his own voice, which is more journalistic and less interactive than Matt's. But hey, that's just a theory. A data theory. Thanks for watching.